We're going to continue reading from Fritjof Schuon's Sufism, Veil and Quintessence. Chapter 2, The Exo-Esoteric Symbiosis, page 27. Another mode of knowledge, if one may put it thus, is the interpretation of sacred scriptures. In a Semitic context, as one knows, scriptural interpretation, with its play of associations of ideas springing from words or images, often takes the place of thinking. Hermeneutics pertains to inspiration as a prerogative of sanctity. But without for all that being able to dispense with the concurrence of reasoning, nor a fortiori of intellection, which it is difficult to separate in practice from inspiration. In any case, it is a peculiarity of inspired interpretation that the starting points of spiritual or mental activity are passages or words from Scripture and not, in the first place, ideas or intuitions. The fact that the frontier between the supernatural and the natural is not always precise explains the inexhaustible diversity and inequality of Sufi, Shiite and rabbinical speculations. One has the impression that with many of these speculations it is not a question of liberating oneself from cosmic maya, but on the contrary of entrenching oneself more deeply within it, of plunging into religious mythology with piety and ingenuity, but without the desire to escape from it. Thus, the notion of esotrism is fairly precarious in the Semitic monotheistic world, although it is precisely in this world that it is the most necessary. Footnote 3 In Hindu contexts, Shankarian Vedanta is not, properly speaking, an esotrism, since the Ramanujian perspective, which corresponds to exotrism, does not act as a cover for it, but leads an independent existence. End of footnote. Indeed, all too often it conveys either a particularly radical and over-refined exotrism, or else an esotrism that is both fragmentary and vulgarized. Hence, exotrized. If thou seekest the kernel, thou must break the shell. This maxim, which is as dangerous as it is true, runs the risk of remaining a dead letter in an esotrism conventionally entrenched in dogmatic theology and denominational mythology. It will no doubt be said that exotrism is the necessary starting point for the corresponding esotrism which is true insofar as it is a question of pure symbolism, hence open to the universal, and not of exclusivist particularism. Footnote 4. For all the more reason, religious fanaticism cannot be a starting point for gnosis, a truth that Omar Khayyam expressed in his own way. End of footnote. Due account being taken, obviously, of the need for prudence, which in a religious context may distort the dialectic of sapience, and this argument can carry much weight. Sufism seems to derive its originality, both positive and problematical, from the fact that it mixes, metaphorically speaking, the spirit of the Psalms with that of the Upanishads as if David had sung the Brahma Sutra, or as if Badrayana had implored the God of Israel. 
Needless to say, this often gives rise to a harmonious, profound and powerful combination in Ibn Atayla, for example. As for the drawbacks of this amalgam, which in fact is not an amalgam since it is spontaneous, one must always take due account of the eschatological idealism which can greatly compensate for pious inconsequences. Just as the ardour of faith can compensate for many human imperfections. Christ said two things which are equally plausible, but which at first sight are contradictory. On the one hand, he ordered obedience to the scribes and Pharisees, since they are, quote, seated in the chair of Moses, end quote. And on the other, he described many of their prescriptions as human, which means that tradition comprises or may comprise elements which, without departing from orthodoxy, are, to say the least, unnecessary luxuries and are sometimes harmful to the moral or spiritual essentiality of the divine message. These lowering and alienating elements, human without being heterodox, also exist de facto in esotrism, always by virtue of a human margin, which heaven concedes to our freedom. It is a question here, not of course of elements which enter directly into the elaboration of sanctity, but of those luxuriant speculations which produce vertigo rather than light. <laughs>